Hello everybody, um, welcome to Panthera Instagram Live. I'm going to get set up and we're going to invite partner photographer Alvis to come and have a conversation with us. For those of you who are maybe new to our page, um, Panthera is the only organization dedicated to protecting all of the world's wild cats, which are 40 different species of wild cats. And today is Global Tiger Day, the 10th anniversary of Global Tiger Day. So we are waiting for our partner photographer, a wildlife photographer, Alvis Lazarus, who's going to join us and answer some questions about what's it really like to photograph tigers in the wild. If you haven't had a chance to check out our amazing news and video footage today, you can go to panthera.org or look on any of our social media channels to see amazing camera trap footage of tigers in a western region of Thailand for the first time in four years. We are very excited about this announcement. It shows that our conservation efforts along with ZSL and the Thailand Department of Natural Resources is working and we are super excited to continue those efforts to protect tigers in Thailand, in Southeast Asia, and all across the continent. Just waiting on Alvis here, but does anyone have any um, questions about Panthera or tigers that I can maybe answer in the meantime? Hi, Angela. How many tigers are left in Thailand? That's a great question. It's difficult to get estimates of tigers because they are so elusive and because the places where they live, it's really hard to get a full camera grid set up to estimate them. But trying to get that number is one of the things that we're working with our partners in Thailand right now to do. And once we find out that number, hopefully increase it by as much as possible. I love seeing everyone from around the world. We have Brazil, Saudi Arabia, um, the US. Where else is everybody from? Do tigers live in Central America? No, tigers do not live in the Western Hemisphere. They are found across the continent of Asia. Oh, we have Ireland. What country needs the most help to protect tigers? Well, that's kind of hard to say. I think um, lately we've been having a lot of strides in Central Asia. So India and Nepal, we've seen huge comebacks. Um, it's really countries in Southeast Asia that are especially struggling right now. Uh, Thailand, uh, Malaysia, because of the increases in poaching, especially be due to with COVID and the pandemic, um, we don't have people out there necessarily as much as possible preventing the poaching, but the poachers are still out there, which is why it's so important that we get support for our tiger programs to monitor these habitats to stop poachers before they can kill tigers um, and feed that into the international wildlife trade. Oh, we have Colombia. California, welcome everybody. Hungary, oh hello. For those of you just joining us, happy Global Tiger Day. It is the 10th anniversary of Global Tiger Day and we are very excited to say that we've been protecting tigers for 10 years and more. India, welcome. Land of many tigers. 
Like I said before, if you hadn't had a chance to check out the amazing new camera trap footage from Thailand, check out our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or our homepage, panthera.org, to see this footage that shows the important comebacks tigers are making in Thailand, thanks to our conservation efforts with partners like ZSL and Thailand government itself. So there is a high demand for tiger parts from the traditional Chinese medicine, but also from the black market in general. Um, the illegal wildlife trade is a very complicated system, um, and the demand affects not just tigers, but lions, jaguars, uh, big cats, small cats across the world. And that's one thing that we're working on fighting is educating people about the trade and putting a stop to it before those animals can get put into the trade. It's definitely a complicated issue, one that we work on and that we're continuing to advance our policy on um, every day. White Siberian tigers. Okay, so white tigers are not their own species. Contrary to what maybe the media portrays, a white tiger is not a spe specific species of tiger. White tigers just have um, genetics that make them white, and it's actually super rare in the wild. And the reason we see it so much is, unfortunately, because breeders um, for the captive industry uh, maybe for circuses or zoos, they breed the white tigers together to get more white tigers. And this causes a lot of problems because as inbreeding often does, you know, blindness, deafness, um, mental disorders, it's, it's not good. So basically any white tigers that you see in the wild are a rarity. Um, it's not something that really should be out there and it's not something that should be save the white tigers. That's a false statement. Is there any chance to work with us to save big cats? Well, um, we're always looking for people on our team because the most important thing you can do to save big cats is to spread the message about the threats to them and to help promote the work that we're doing because a lot of people don't actually know the serious trouble that big cats are in across the world and what we can do to protect them, which is to make sustainable choices, to educate about the illegal wildlife trade and why it's important not to support it, cub petting through the U.S. No, we do not support cub petting. Um, obviously, we want everyone to love tigers, but we find that they can do so without having to breed them in small cages across the United States to do it. So no, we do not support the cub petting business. I just heard from Alvis. He will be here in two minutes. Um, if you want to become a member, a donor, a follower, we would love to have you. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and go to panthera.org to sign up for our newsletter, our monthly updates. You'll get great videos, pictures, and updates on all the conservation work we're doing. We have blogs, we have videos. We love to share the work we're doing with everyone out there like you guys. We don't currently have any scholarships for students at the moment, but that is a great idea and something I can keep in mind. Um, yes. <laughs> Examples that demonstrate a tiger's physical strength. Well, I guess any kind of video you see of a tiger shows how strong they are, right? Um, that's a good question, and I know that there are some videos on our YouTube page that show off tigers and what they're doing. Oh, thank you for signing up. Reintroduction of big cats to areas is a very tricky project. They're very tricky to do because there's a lot of variables, especially when you have large mammals with large home sizes and, and social complexities. Um, so the project to reintroduce them to Kazakhstan is not something that I'm going to comment on. I think that that would be a great question to present to some of our tiger scientists. So I will remember to ask them about it and hopefully get back to you with an answer on that on social media soon. Yes, great news from Thailand. If you didn't hear me say it already, camera trap footage from a, rest, a western region of Thailand shows tigers in that area for the first time in four years. This is amazing news to us and our partners that are working there. It shows that the conservation efforts we have on the ground are working and what we are going to continue to push forward to save tigers in Thailand and across Southeast Asia and across Asia altogether. Dr. Shaler is no longer with Panthera, no. 
Um, we don't have any volunteer work on the ground, but we always need people to share our message, share our news, share the education about big cats, because getting people to love cats and understand how we can protect them is the most important thing you can do from your own home. Yes, Brazil and Jaguars. We definitely do a lot of Jaguar work. And Jaguar Month and Jaguar Day are in November, so you'll probably see more of these live events focused around the Jaguar come then. Leopards are really good at climbing, um, whereas lions and tigers not so much. Um, they have different physiological adaptations, and we actually have a really cool blog that compares leopards um, and jaguars. And I can share that later on our social media, but it has some more information about leopards and how and why they're such great climbers. Hi, Chrissy. I love seeing so many Panthera staff members and family on. Welcome, everybody. And to everyone who just joined, welcome to the Pride. As I said before, the best way to volunteer for Panthera or to work for big cats in general is to just share our message and to support our conservation efforts because we're doing the most vital work on the ground, but we can't do it without you guys, and it's you guys that make it possible. So thank you for supporting us, for donating to our campaigns, to for making our message heard and allowing us to do the important work that we do across the world to save wild cats. Okay, and we are going to welcome Alvis Lazarus. So for those of you who are just joining, hello, my name is Jamie Zachariah. I'm the Communications and Digital Content Manager for Panthera. And I'm here with our amazing partner wildlife photographer, Alvis Lazarus, welcome. Hello, Jamie. And a warm greetings to everyone who is live as well. I'm doing great, Jamie. So, How about you? Great. Good, good. Where are you joining us from? Uh, so I'm currently uh, joining, obviously, from uh, India, but uh, I'm uh, dialing in from Andhra Pradesh. Actually, I belong to Karnataka, but because of the lockdown, uh, I just got stuck in uh, a different state. Uh, couldn't go back yet. Most probably in another month, I'll be uh, back at my location, which is in Bangalore, Karnataka. Great. So you, um, you know, live and grow up in India. So tigers obviously hold a special place in your heart. How long have you been photographing them? Um, okay. So though I've been uh, doing photography for many years, uh, uh, tigers I have been uh, photographing for the past five years. Uh, so my first sighting happened in uh, 2016, after almost uh, a year of wait, which is actually less. There are, I, I, there are a lot of my friends. I want to very specifically tell one of my friend, uh, uh, Srinath Karthik. I'm not sure whether he is uh, uh, watching this. He waited for years together. And then you won't believe what is his first sighting. He first spotted a black panther, which is the most rare, uh, rarest big cat. I made to see that in a while. So, the luck favors in different ways. So I was very fortunate within one year of driving to so many jungles, I was able to see my first tiger. And now from there, uh, every uh, 
uh, month or alternate month i used to see a wild tiger except for the last few months obviously i'm in a, a lockdown yeah so it's not easy to spot tigers in the wild like it would necessarily be maybe something like lions in africa right uh yeah so i actually i want to uh, give this to the viewers as well because uh, someone will see my uh, profile or even uh, so many other photographers based out of india as well they see a lot of tiger images and they think that okay it's like just go to jungle and then you can see a, a tiger uh, trust me we have just around 3000 tigers in 400000 square meters of tiger reserves so you need to go at the right time and you can end up waiting for more time you may have to uh, shell out a lot of money as well because tiger drives are quite expensive and it could really test your uh, patience but that is the excitement as well and when you see the tiger i think it all pays off you will forget how much time you spent how much money you spent all goes off so when you do see the tiger in the wild what's that like <clears throat> okay so two things the first time i saw the tiger it was at around 6:30 pm in the night uh, absolutely like i was able to see just the eyes of the tiger uh, like the famous song day of the tiger <laughs> okay uh, but i have seen a tiger along with an uh, elephant on my first sighting though i was not able to take any pictures still that uh, memory is so fresh in my mind because after a year wait i am seeing the first tiger um and uh, so when 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 i uh, though, though i don't have a photograph uh, to tell but it is a very memorable uh, experience seeing a tiger in wild so do you have any other exciting stories about photographing in the wild uh, whether it's tigers or something else that you want to share with the viewers okay um i i want to probably talk about two different uh, exciting moments uh, the first one which is very very um uh, what to say uh, it's so special for me it is an identical stax uh, it is just two deer which is so common in india so if you see uh, uh, the picture there will be uh, it was taken in bandipur tiger reserve which is in uh, karnataka just the uh, beautiful habitat of jungle and there are two stax just standing and they just look at you it almost look identical to you this is what nadjo and there were like five six stacks and then there were other deer as well there slowly when i was seeing them while the others were uh, seeing them i i just got intrigued by this moment as i see them slowly uh, the deer were walking away and then i saw this only two stacks so i have visualized that image in my mind and i was waiting uh, to uh, for both the stacks to look at me by the time uh, the naturalist said why can't we go that side and everyone wanted to go to see the tiger and i wanted to take the shot so i was kind of an odd man out in the vehicle and i am telling guys please wait uh, both should look at me you won't believe 15 minutes we were waiting at the time i can hear all scolding even my friends were telling alvis what are you doing dear you can see any every time and i was just saying please i want the shot after 15 minutes i got a, uh, i took a shot at 1 by 1250 of a second i bursted seven shots only in one shot both the stacks were uh, uh, looking at me so i took that shot and obviously my uh, uh, friends were not uh, so happy with it but they were very happy once this got the nadjo award because that is that is one of the uh, the biggest award i got from nadjo so this is one experience congratulations the second experience yeah uh, th- thank you so much uh, jamie for that the second experience is a, uh, is this is from a recent trip which is in 2019 uh, june to bandavgarh um so there is a tiger family which lives in a mountain area it is like a cave uh, so the access itself is very difficult um but it is completely legal to visit is it within the the, the tourism zone the drive zone itself so every time i go visit this place just to see tigers on that i was so uh, not so lucky to see them because i always wanted to see the tiger on the uh, cave so 
on that drive finally we know there are three cups there we were focusing in one direction that we we were able to see one tail of one tiger cub so moment we realize okay now it's time to go back i am just turning my head just exactly 90 almost like 45 degrees to where we are view was there is another cub the complete time they were just staring at me the tiger cub was just staring at us we never seen so it was like that moment even when i am explaining i am getting goosebumps so it is like a, a, a so and and i was so happy to tell that is the image which is used in global tiger day campaign by panthera cats so thankful for the team to uh, pick up that image and viewers can go back and see on your page that image on the global tiger day it just rest on the uh, 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 rock like a small house cat though it is not and it just stares so i was like shaken and i said told you i am getting goosebumps now i just frozen for a moment and then i took the shot and it didn't even took the eye out of me and then uh, and after that next 15 minutes i was just and one is a kind of a thrilling moment and so this kind of surprises await you in the jungle that sounds amazing i'm very jealous of your experiences and i think a lot of our um, viewers are as well but would you where Thank would you, you tell our viewers to go to see tigers if they want tigers in india what's the best chance they have to see them okay so there are so many tips even i have learned it uh, throughout and i would be glad to share that uh, but since there is a very limited time we have i'll give few tips and then i will talk about few tiger reserves and the speciality of each of those tiger reserves first and foremost thing if you want to see a lot of tigers you need to go on summer but you need to keep in mind you can't see much of greens but there are few jungles still you can see green i will talk about that as well but if if your target is you want to see a lot of tigers or if you want to have a higher probability first time i would suggest you should go on a summer and if you are going to the central india then the temperatures will be very high so you should be prepared for it so that gives you a very good chance second you should have a good naturalist it's it's very difficult uh, it's not like tiger is waiting for you you just go see and come yeah. people should know about the tigers and a naturalist plays a very crucial role and uh, uh, so uh, naturalists are wildlife photographers good friends because without them it is very very uh, difficult to spot so i i want to recognize my naturalist from bandavgarh because bandavgarh is like my second home every year i visit at least once or twice and uh, sunil and ravi from bandavgarh if they are seeing big kudos to them these are the two naturalists i completely prefer and mostly i travel with uh, sunil so we need that kind of people who are passionate about what they do they, they, so yes yes wildlife call the jungle as home but these naturalists also call jungle and wildlife that is like their family so full credit to them in terms of showing this wildlife so that is also very very crucial and uh, third thing obviously patience even those naturalists can't guarantee that you are going to see a tiger and obviously you can't expect what pose you want that is out of the question itself okay so now uh, in terms of tiger reserves um my first pick is bandavgar tiger reserve i am not sure whether i am lucky because whenever i go to bandavgar i have never returned with less than 15 tigers minimum is 15 tigers i have seen on every trip maximum is 24 tigers in a in a trip which is like i go for eight drives mostly and it happened on june last year so absolute great track record for me on bandavgar not just that you can go to bandavgar the reason being there is a zone called uh, tala zone where it is almost uh, evergreen that means even on a summer you can take tiger images with some water and uh, if you want to take some with some greens i think this is the place to go the second one uh, is rantambore uh, national park so rantambore the speciality is if you want to see five different jungles within a single jungle you need to go to rantambore so one zone is completely mountain um in my feed you can see uh, i would have named it as tiny tiger it is taken from a mountain and down down the valley the tiger was walking there is a zone like that completely rocky you need a four wheel drive to go in etc etc and 
the second zone is completely full of water and lakes so it's total uh, uh, a contrast and one is kind of savanna so you'd say it's like african uh, feel where it's, you can see no trees etc so rantabor you can see multiple uh, different kind of different jungles within the same uh, jungle itself the next one absolutely beautiful jungle with tigers and elephants and other wildlife is corbat um so you need to visit uttarakhand definitely uh, to uh, see a different landscape and tigers as well and another one is nagarhole tiger reserve which is if you want to see everything tiger leopard black panther elephants wild dog all the specialties of india in one jungle you need to go to uh, nagarhole tiger reserve or uh, very famously called as kabini that is another pick the last one you you may not see lot of tigers but i will still very highly recommend this jungle which is very close to my heart as well is badra tiger reserve badra is also from karnataka uh, i don't know i couldn't express it why it is so special but uh, it kind of it's very uh, beautiful jungle but tiger sighting is uh, very very less i hope these tips will uh, help the viewers to plan the next trip to india thank you yeah you seem you're incredibly knowledgeable about tigers in india and um so wildlife photography is that part of wildlife conservation and how so okay i think we need another one hour or two hour session to discuss and debate on it <laughs> but i am going to very uh, clearly tell my views in terms of how i see it page part assume there are 100 people uh, and 10 people are into wildlife there are 90 people who doesn't know about wildlife how do you communicate to them the importance of it you make posters you do whatever it is you talk to them it is not going to uh, make them understand but you show them one image which they say wow and then they are ready to listen to you and asking okay this is really good where can i see it this is how it is and a living testimony is myself though i started as a kind of a, a nature photographer i i take landscapes and everything after seeing images of tigers and big cats if you see my instagram feed finally it is only tigers are there but it's fine i'm i'm happy with that so that change is brought by seeing images so definitely wildlife photography is part of wildlife conservation but there is one 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 but here but i would suggest don't stop with that that is just a starting point the next step you actually can do so many uh, other things as a, a conservation even the 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 partnership with pantra what i am uh, doing is 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 a next step from wildlife photography where obviously you guys are doing the fantastic job being on field at this point of time i don't have an opportunity to do that on though i would love to do but being here i am happy to be with panthera and help whatever the best way possible i think that could be the meaningful step two and the third one though i think your question was not direct to it i want to touch base on that lot of people write to me asking wildlife photography is there any future on it can i do this as a profession unfortunately when i had this question most of the people said no it is very difficult to monetize it is very difficult to make a profession out of it trust me there are so many fields within wildlife which you can actually make that as a a, a profession if i am a i am a, a engineer if i was able to uh, understand this and I, if i was able to do this professionally a person who is studying about wildlife studying about ecology can do wonders so i uh, probably i think uh, we we should have to plan another session or uh, because there are so many ways you can actually contribute to uh, a wildlife so people should more and more people should come into this uh, wildlife the reason is this is the future all the corporate companies are now talking about how to make their services and products aligned with nature so so you you be on nature as your thing and you are going to be the uh, forerunner so you should not shy away from making this as your uh, profession quickly to name few P 
people may ask then what kind of jobs i will uh, get for example let's take photography itself uh, for example i i am a mechanical engineer i just know i love wildlife i have my uh, i know about good about my camera i can take good images great think about who are the people working in panthra taking images who are the people working in nat geo who are the people working in wwf who are those people all those are photographers so there is a job there number 1 number 2 who are those naturalists working there in the jungle people who study about uh, uh, wildlife and help in conservation there is a complete another way of doing it okay now you want to do something else if you are a good in the editing uh, trust me i can just name 50 60 jobs available so anyone who is going to tell you there is no future in wildlife i am doing it for years but you can't monetize it i'm not even talking about monetizing there is a huge scope for making this as a profession and this should be very strong i think i hope people understand this and the people get uh, this out of it and if any further uh, questions on this feel free to uh, leave a note to either to panthra and me i would be glad to help those people and more and more youngsters should uh, consider this as a profession and you should get into uh, this this thing. i think a lot of people are actually telling they couldn't uh, uh, hear the audio and this is the most crucial piece of what I, what i've explained um i think okay if you're having trouble hearing try exiting the live video and re-entering i know that has worked for some of our viewers Okay, you you want me to restate oh. quickly those professions? It's fine. Okay. Um. Perfect. Yeah, let's wait and see if we get people to come back in and out and see what they think. But I had, I wanted to um, elaborate on something you mentioned. How important it is what you do in working with the organizations that do the work, and how integral it is to have a good wildlife photographer on the team. So we love working with you, but I want to know why do you like working with Panthera? Oh, okay that that is a very very easy question that is so panthras mission is i think i would put panthras the only organization which is focusing on the 40 uh, big cat uh, species so you you work on the conservation of big cats and as i've told you uh, though i started as a nature photographer i have funneled down to finally big cats so that is where it is uh, aligned so i i'm glad to be part of panthra and very important thing all the people who uh, worked with uh, in panthra i think i i get a kind of very uh, warm feel so it's a great team and i'm very glad to be part of uh, a panthra team thank you so much thank you for being our partner photographer um as you mentioned many of your images are being used in our 10th anniversary global tiger day campaign and for the viewers if you hadn't had a chance to see those you can check out our social media channels our website panthera.org and make sure you're signed up for our newsletter because you'll get a lot of emails with a lot of these beautiful photographs um that Alvis is mentioning um so since you know so much about tigers in india what is your overall impression on how the population is doing okay so uh, the reason so there are so many reports coming in the one i am referring is the report is done a uh, census and report is done once in 4 years um so the last one if my memory is right is is on 2018 i think released on 2019 so i have read the report on uh, 2019 so 2006 the tigers numbers were in a very very bad shape they were in some 1400 plus tigers so that is a time this has been taken as a uh, a kind of an agenda uh, and which is driven from the top obviously and uh, the target set is to make them double uh, by i think uh, by 2022 and what happened is as we stand today we have uh, 3000 short of 33 actually 2967 uh, tigers so 33 short of uh, 3000 let's call it as 3000 because i am happy to tell that as 3000 so almost 3000 tigers are there in wild which is great and i want to really recognize uh, staff from because there are three states which uh, which lead this madhya pradesh where i said bandavgarh which is like my uh, second home 
and Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, and Uttarakhand. These are the three states which uh, leads this in terms of around 400 plus, and Madhya Pradesh and Karnataka have 500 plus tigers. So, who is responsible for it? Is I would uh, tell uh, two people: the forest department and all the naturalists there. They play a crucial role. Not just that, the local people over there. I think that is very very crucial. Most times we'll tell. A uh, lot of negative news will be spread. People are chasing tiger killing. Yes, it is happening. But uh, think about these places. Like, for example, whenever we go to uh, Bandhavgarh, we always travel as a family. Uh, me, my wife, my wife doesn't leave me alone. I can't go to any tiger trips alone. She always accompanies me. She is also a... Uh, so it's very limited trip. She has left me all alone. But we all travel together. So when we go there, Everyone talks about tigers and everything. So Bandhavgarh, if you go and ask about bird photography, no one will show you bird. People will show you only tigers. So if you are a bird photographer, don't go to uh, Bandhavgarh. Specifically Sunil, my naturalist, he said he will, if I ask birds, he will get angry on me. So I stopped asking him any birds. We will see only uh, uh, tigers over there. So census is great. 3000 is great, but still there is a long way to go, which definitely we will take these numbers up. Thanks to all the wildlife photographers who visit and take images and share. It's very, very important. You play a crucial role uh, on this one. Quickly, I'll highlight the pain involved in getting this census. Why always the four year one census is right is people spend almost more than 12 to 15 months to actually get these numbers. It's not just someone can go and count it. More than 26,000 camera traps has to be set. Sounds so easy, right? 26,000 camera traps. The camera traps will give you more than 35. Yeah, it, the camera traps will give you 35 million images. Think about scrolling through 35 million images and find out where is the tiger. ID them. Trust me, a big salute to all the people who are part of this tiger census. You, they are doing a tremendous job. So uh, basically, uh, so when you see a report, don't just see the graph. Please, they actually ID the tiger. So I always prefer that four year one tiger census done by uh, Indian government itself. They release it. So it is, it will be very authentic. With that, it is, it is, uh, the numbers are really promising. We should continue this work uh, going forward. So uh, the we, we will never get into the old story of 1400. It's always now it's going to be. 1,400 and uh, going towards 10,000. Uh, another point, uh, probably a little bit deroute from this case. Uh, very, very uh, important thing here is more than the wild tigers, the tigers in captivity are much, much higher. I think that is what Panthra, the news, whatever you put in the work you guys are doing on captive tigers. Big, big thanks to all who work towards that because more than a tiger in wild, tiger in captivity is uh, very high. We know which are all those countries doing for it, but whichever country it is, I think we should stand together to ensure uh, illegal wildlife trade related to tigers has to be completely eliminated. Yes, that's a great point. It's one of the biggest threats to tigers yep. in every country is the illegal wildlife trade. Um, yep. And you can learn more about yep, yep. Panthera's work on that as well, Panthera.org. So Alvis, before I let okay. you go, I want to know what's the one thing that you want people to know about tigers and saving tigers? Like what's the one message you want everyone to take home today on this 10th anniversary of Global Tiger Day? Okay, so the message is pretty simple. Um, I always say one famous quote, I also write some quotes. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure whether Angela knows about it. So one quote, which is very famous, I'm going to restate uh, for all the audience. No matter how famous you are, inside the jungle, the wildlife are the celebrities. <laughs> okay, so that means well, whoever you are, because sometimes when you get that power, you tend to little bit muscle with the uh, rules. Okay, so we should not do that. So what we should do is even on wildlife photography, what comes first? Is it photography or wildlife? It is not photography wildlife. It is wildlife photography. So wildlife comes first. I want to request all the photographers. Yes good image, fame, awards, everything is good. But please put wildlife first. And being in India, tiger is the icon of our country. Let's put the tigers first. And they, they control the entire ecosystem of India. If you don't have tigers, that's it. The complete ecosystem will collapse. So let's uh, take care of our uh, tigers. That's it.
that is the perfect way to wrap this up and the most important message. So thank you. Thank you so much, Alvis, for joining us. Thank you for allowing us to use your work in our campaigns. And for those of you watching, mm -hmm. thanks for coming. Um, if you don't already know, because I only mentioned it a few times, it's the 10th annual Global Tiger Day, and you can contribute to our important conservation efforts by donating, by sharing, by taking a look at some of our videos and first through .org or through our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. So thank you all for coming today, um, and happy Global Tiger Day, everybody. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, uh, Jamie. Yep, bye-bye.